Keep clapping, we didn't remember. Oh, hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Good to be with you. And it's good you are with me. How many are with me here? I said, How many are with me here? God bless everyone in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time and bless your name. We glorify you. You're a great God, a good God, a gracious God. You despise none. You reject none. You don't throw away anyone, no matter how bad, no matter how rough. You can make everything in everyone beautiful. And I pray the beauty and the glory of heaven will come to every life right now in Jesus' name. Bless us in your words. Bless us with your wonders. Bless us with a new creation for everyone. Confirm me to Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. You are going to shout a good amen before you sit down. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Today, we're looking at Fuller. Goodness, heightening, imparted joy. The joy of achievement. The joy of having power. The joy of progress. And the joy of just being all right. There is something that heightens that joy. Elevates that joy. Increases that joy. And places that joy right in your life. And anywhere you go and everywhere you go, you exude joy. You express joy. And your life just shows that this is an excited, happy joyful one. And that joy can be imparted into your life and it can be heightened with the goodness of God in its fullness. The topic, fuller goodness, heightening imparted joy. I'm looking at um, Jeremiah chapter 33 and I'm reading from verse 6. Jeremiah Chapter 33, we're looking at verse 6, it says, Behold, I will bring it health and kill, and I will kill them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And then in verse 9, it says, in verse 9, it's telling us now, it says, and it shall be to me, a name of joy. It shall be to me a name of joy. That when your name comes up, there will be joy everywhere. That's the man. That's the woman. That's the lady. That's the boy. That's the girl. The school is happy for him being a student. And everyone is joyful. The families are joyful. Yes, she's her daughter. And everywhere you go, they say, hey, that's the boy, that's the girl, that's the man, that's the woman. And you bring joy everywhere. And the Lord said, it shall be to me, even in heaven, when they mention your name, there will be joy in heaven. Amen. 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 They'll mention your name in heaven and the angels will burst into joy because it says it shall be to me a name, a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I shall do unto them today. And every day of your life, the Lord will do good in your life in Jesus' name. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, all the goodness, and for all the prosperity. Somebody there is going to prosper from today. 
the prosperity that I procure unto it, fuller goodness, heightening, imparted joy. There are, you know, five things. Number one, F is forsake foolishness and follow the faithful friend. And G, glorify God for growing goodness and gift. H, healed of all hearts by the healer. I, intervention for invincibility. Now, that word invincibility means you're not conquered. You cannot be conquered. Invincible. Somebody that cannot be subjected, cannot be crushed, cannot be taken away, cannot be defeated. He is invincible and it is the God of heaven that sent Christ your intercessor. Pray for you that makes you invincible. Intervention for invincibility by the intercessor. And J is joyfulness for the joyless by the justifier. Joyfulness. Joy in your heart. Joy in your soul. Joy in your mind. And joy every time the result comes out. Joy. Every time the result of that interview comes out joy. Every time they measure something and they call you and they measure you against the standard, they say, what's your name? From where are you? Who are your parents? Because there will be joy all through your life in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, Amen! Amen. Number one. Number one, forsake foolishness and follow the faithful friend. Look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. Forsake the foolish and live. Now, you may not understand when it says forsake foolishness, forsake the foolish, forsake the fool. Now, let me explain. A king many years ago, was about to die, and he knew it. And those days, the king used to have somebody that they appointed to amuse him, to make him happy, to tell him stories, almost to play the comedian before him. And every time to cheer him up, he will ask, is the fool there? They used to call him a fool because he used to say some foolish things that the king would just laugh and laugh. And so, is the fool there? And they said, yes, and fool come. And the fool came. That's his title. And uh, the king said, I'm about to go. About to leave. And so, I want you to go around the country, and go and find somebody more foolish than yourself, the greatest fool in the land. Go get him. Before I die, I will offer him this staff. And the fool went all around the nation, every corner, every community, every local government, everywhere. And then he came back. And the king said, have you found somebody more of a fool than yourself? And he said, no, really. But I can tell you somebody who is a greater fool than myself. And so the king said, tell me, tell me, tell me. I want to hear. And the fool said, Your Majesty, Honorable, you are going on a long journey. Yes. When you go to this long journey, you will not come back here. Yes. And the fool said to the king, Have you prepared for that journey? And the king thought and said, no, not really. And the fool said, 
get the staff. You are the greatest fool that I've seen in the land. You're going for a long journey. When we go for a short journey, a brief journey, we're prepared. And you are here, you tell me, you're going on this long journey. And you have not prepared. What's the fool telling us? Even the fool telling us that if we don't prepare for the future, that we are the greatest fool. The woman wants to prepare a good meal, and so she looks at the future. At the future at the table, when all the members of the family will gather together, what will I cook, what will I prepare, and what will I dress for the family? The future. And the woman, the wife, the mother goes to prepare. We always prepare for the future. A child is going to take an exam and he knows that the exam is going to take place in two or three days or two or three weeks or two or three months. He prepares. If he is not preparing, that's the greatest fool in college. A person is preparing for a profession and he says, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be this in the future. I will say, how are you preparing? He has no preparation. He's not thinking of the future. That's the greatest fool in our community. A person is preparing for old age. When I get older, I'm going to be this, I'm, I'm going to rest. I'm going to retire and I'm going to live on what I've already provided. And the person, look at them there, is not preparing for that time, the greatest fool in our place. A person says, I know there is heaven. I know that heaven is there. And to get there, this is what it requires. The only one that can take me there is Jesus Christ who says, I go to prepare a place for you. And the fellow is not preparing for the heavenly future. That the greatest fool on earth. Whatever we have, education, we have, you know, money, we have, whatever. But we're not preparing for the future. That is the greatest fool in town. There are even great, greater fools in the church. A fool in the church. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about heaven. And we're talking about how we can get there. And the man, the woman comes to church every Sunday and every weekday. And he prays and does everything. But the preparation does not include preparing for the heavenly future. That's the greatest fool in church. Forsake the foolish. All the foolish things, whatever I'm doing, it may look interesting. I may be excited with it, but it's not preparing me for the future. You want to have a future health. You want to be strong, and you want to be healthy. And in the future, even when you get older, you want to still remain strong. How are you preparing for that? The fellow is eating junk and he's uh, doing risky things that could kill him and destroy him. That's the greatest fool among us. And the Lord is saying, think of the future. And when you think of the future, you prepare for the future. If you are not preparing for the future, you are the greatest fool in town. I will not be a fool. I said I will not be a fool. You know, somebody who goes to college and, uh, you know, you spent uh, three years, four years, five years, seven years in college and the final exam that will determine the result of all those four, five years, seven years in college is coming uh, the following week and then uh, in the, you know, just a week to the uh, exam, it's still going to the night club, it's still surfing the internet, it's still looking at all those things that will not contribute anything to the result of the final exam. That's foolish. And it says, forsake the foolish and live. Live a bright life and live a vibrant life and live with eternal life and live the life of Christ, the Christ-like life, the life that is peaceful. You have to forsake the foolish and live. 
and go in the way of understanding. I pray the Lord will do it in your life. In my life, I will forsake the foolish. Now, I, I need to call myself to attention. Now, I say, and I'm talking about you, I'm going to do this next week. I'm going to do this next month. I'm going to do that next year. I must have a goal. If I don't have a goal, am I wise or foolish? I'm going to become this in life in a decade, in 10 years' time. Because you need to have a yearly goal, a five-year goal, a 10-year goal. And you need to look at the future. And this is my goal for one year. Two years, five years, ten years. And if that is where I want to be, I imagine myself already there. Then I walk backwards and I say, what do I need to do? So that I will get there in ten years. Understand? If you're 20 now, in ten years, you're 30. If you're 35 now, in ten years, you're 45. You don't wait until when your vehicle gets there in 10 years' time. I'm here now. What am I supposed to do here? You should have thought about that 10 years ago. And that is the future. That if you are wise and you forsake the foolish, you'll be going and, and you're checking up every week. Since I say in 10 years, that's where I want to be. This past week, what have I done to contribute to that future goal? This past month, what have I done to contribute to the 10-year uh, goal? And this year, the year is running to an end. What have I done to contribute to that final goal? So that when you arrive, 10 years point, then you know I made it because I forsook the foolish. The foolish things I would have been doing uh, that would take my heart, take my mind, take my attention, all that I have forsaken. And the Lord, the friend of all people that come to him, has taken me to this point now, he will take you there. He will take you there. And then it says, follow the faithful friend. It tells us in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, reading from verse 13. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends, that's the real friend. That is the faithful friend. Do you have any friend you think you have? But what determines a friend? Who is a friend? The one that lays down what is beneficial to him for my benefit. Christ laid down. It's glory that you might have glory. Christ laid down his life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Christ laid down his liberty that you may have liberty and freedom. That's a real friend. Christ laid down his health that you might have healing and health. That's a real friend. Christ laid down his eternal attachment with the heavenly father that you may have reconciliation and connection with the heavenly father. That's the real friend. It says, greater love has no man than this, that a man, Christ, your friend, your savior, your redeemer, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Now, here is a friend that lays down everything, even what he had had from all eternity, 
Before the world was created, he laid it down so that you will have forgiveness, freedom, salvation, joy, heavenly blessing, earthly blessing. He laid down such life that you may have life eternal. Here is another friend. He's not even able to lay down one dollar for you. It's not able to lay down even one dress for you. It's not able to lay down his her idiosyncrasies. You know, some things, some funny things they do to annoy you. They cannot even lay that down for you to be happy. Which one are you to choose? The faithful friend, the eternal friend, the loving friend, the eternal friend that lays down everything for your sake. I Choose Jesus. Let me hear you. Let everyone hear you. Let your neighbors hear, hear you. That's the wise thing to do. We forsake the foolish and live. And then we choose him who becomes a friend. And he says, I'll carry you through. Whatever your challenge, whatever your difficulty, whatever your lack, I'll carry you through. Forsake the foolish, forsake foolishness, and follow the faithful friend. I'm looking at G here now. G is to glorify God for growing goodness and gift. Glorify God for growing goodness and gift. In the world in which we live, many things happen that are contrary and negative to goodness and to growth and to progress in our lives. It's, a, it's like every time we want to go up, uh, there is something that comes to disturb our progress and our growth. But it is this gift of God Christ, that the Father has given unto us. And in that gift, there is everything. I'm sure you, you understand gifts during uh, Christmas time. Um, some, sometimes we go to some places and we see Father Christmas. And Father Christmas has something to, and the young people are so very happy. What are you going now? We're going to Father Christmas, and Father Christmas was going to give you, he'll give you, might give you Tom Tom. And when you put it in your mouth, five minutes, the gift is gone. And you don't have any enjoyment of that gift anymore. Oh, I'm going to have a new dress. And then you have that dress, and after some months, the dress now does not fit because you are growing and the dress does not grow. What I'm saying is, yes, we understand gifts. And people give us gifts, but they always, always expire. And we can't continue to make use of them after some time. There is somebody, the gift of God, and he gives us all we need here on earth. And he gives us what will make us enter eternal everlasting joy and happiness. And he gives us as a gift what will make us to spend eternal days in glory without any lack. And it increases and increases and increases. That's the goodness of God that grows in our lives. And that gift, the Bible says, unspeakable gift. Untold gift. A kind of gift we cannot even finish describing. And we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I cannot live a peaceful life, a powerful life, a fulfilled life, an exciting life without the gift. And the Lord will give you that gift today in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 10. John chapter 4, we're looking at verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest, if thou knewest, 
What's the Lord saying? He says, I know you know many things. You know the name of that chief, of that king, of that person. I know you know many things. You know that subject. You know that subject. You know that subject. I know you know many things. You know that town. And you know that city. And you know that citadel. I know you know many things. But if you knew many things we know that will not satisfy us even in this life. And the knowledge is just knowledge. And it says, if you only knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, I know my talent, go beyond that. I know my skill, go beyond that. I know my ability, go beyond that. I know what I can do, go beyond that. What you have, what you can do, everything is limited. But this gift, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who is it that says to thee, give me to drink, thou whatever has asked him, and he would have given thee living waters. Amen? Amen. 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 Living waters. Now, Christ has the monopoly of that living water. It's the water of life. All the water you can have on this earth, from the well, from the rain, from the river, all those waters, we cannot refer to them as living waters. The water of life. Christ said, if you knew the gift of God and the only one that can give you the living waters, thou would have asked him and you'll ask him today. I said you'll ask him today. And then he gives you the gift of living waters. The living waters that will come into you and on and on and flow into life eternal. And then the goodness of God will be increasing in your life. I'm talking to somebody over there. I said the goodness of God will be flowing and growing in your life in Jesus' name. And you glorify God with that. Glorify God with that. And many times you want to glorify God. You don't have the, 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 the satisfaction, the refreshing, and the life, spontaneous life to do that. But when he gives you the living waters, when he gives you the water of life, when he gives you himself, and then you drink and drink until you're fully satisfied. That's the only time you can really glorify the Lord. Glorify God. God for growing goodness and gift. I'm coming to H. H is uh, healed of all hurts by the healer. Healed of all hurts by the healer. I used to think that people that have uh, physical deformity, blindness, deafness, Dumbness were the sick people, hurting people. I used to think that the poor who have nothing to eat and they are starving. I used to think that they are the people who are hurting. But now I realize every man, every woman, every boy, every girl on earth hurts. Something that hurts us in our mind. Something that makes us cry. And I'm still to find the person coming through life as a baby only cried. And then from that point of being a toddler has never cried again. You might forget. You might forget what made you cry. What hurts you. The rejection. The loneliness makes you Hurt. You feel hurt within you. And then the lack, the need in your life makes you hurt. And you say, I don't have everything I need. And in privacy, you are wondering, I've got this, I've got this, but how about this? And you hurt on the inside. And the way people treat you, they slander you, they criticize you, they cut you down. 
that makes you hurt within you. And the place you want to get to, you're not as fast as you expected. You've got this, but you've not got the reward of your labor after you go to that place. That makes you hurt on the inside. The people you depended upon, they will help me. They lead me up. They're the people that behind, they pull you down. They say one thing when they are with you to lift you up, just to put you on that imaginary position and tower. Only one thing they say, behind you, they do ten things that will crush you and bring you down. And when you know about it, you hurt. And all the hurts of your life, as they accumulate, high blood pressure comes, and they accumulate, then ulcer comes, and they accumulate in your life, other sicknesses come, because you understand, many of our sicknesses are what we call chemical reactions to our thoughts, our disappointments, and all the jolting, and all the evil things. Many of those uh, physical hurts that come out in the body eventually, they are the result of internal hurts from the inside. And when we uh, go to, you know, those who have been trained to help us and to take our sicknesses away, praise God for them, praise God for them, they apply this, they apply this, they apply that, and they're able to take away the outward consequence of the inner heart. But the inner heart, the rejection, the loneliness, and the lack, and the sorrow, and the suffering, and all those thoughts that bring us down, what can, they cannot handle that. There's only one person that can handle both the external and the internal. It can take the loneliness away. It can take the hearts away. It can heal us of everything. Our spirit is healed. Our soul is healed. Our body is healed. It gives us the threefold healing. Spirit, soul, and body. And then will become completely all right. Somebody there today, completely all right. Somebody in front of me there, completely all right. Somebody there online, completely all right. And it is Christ. It is Christ. It is Christ alone that can heal all the hurts because it is the divine, the most high healer. It will heal you. Amen. I said it will heal you. Amen. Look at Psalm 103. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Why? Look at verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then in verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You're living with somebody. You have offended him. Maybe intentionally, maybe ignorantly, maybe foolishly, maybe humanly. And you tell him, please, I've offended you. Forgive me. You say, okay, no problem. I've forgiven you. But that's the word of mouth. In his heart, he says, I'll get him. I'll get her. At the critical moment, I'll get him. But he said he has forgiven you. Human forgiveness. Then, at other times, you do something unthinkable. Unbelievable. This is incredible. How could my boy do this? How could my daughter do this? And you go to daddy, you say, daddy, forgive me. Stand up. This one, never. I will never forgive this one. You know, in life, we come to situations where we've done some, we regret it. We have 
remorse. We even repent. We even restitute. We even restore. And we say, please, I know it was bad. Forgive me. Shut up. This one, I'll never forgive. And then you see their hand that hurts. Their hand that oppresses. Their hands, although they said they love you, they forgive you, yet that one, they say, it will never be cleared. But there is a God in heaven. It doesn't put scale to weigh our offense or to weigh our iniquity. Some, they weigh heavy. Some, they're very bad. Some, they are indescribable. Some, they even hurt God himself. Some, they nailed Christ to the cross again. But you come, you say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry. He forgiveth all thine iniquities. And he never remembers them anymore and says, bad boy, bad girl, bad man, bad woman. Although there may be men or women who knew about those things 40 years ago. And when you are the height of your joy and you are happy and you are hilarious and you say, praise the Lord, he has forgiven me. You know, that person will come and say, I just wanted to talk to you. I see that you are happy because you are so forgetful. 40 years ago, look at what you did. Uh -huh. And he thinks that you just deflate your balloon, that the joy will go, the happiness will go. Don't listen to them. The eternal one, God, from all eternity, it says, he forgiveth all thine iniquities. I am forgiven. Say it aloud. And then it says, who healeth all thy diseases, who healeth all thy diseases, internal disease, external disease, a short, brief disease, an inherited disease. It was in daddy. It was in mommy. And I inherited it from daddy and mommy. All diseases, God heals. It will heal you today. All right? It will heal me today. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Your life becomes so precious and he protects that life. He redeems that life from destruction. What are you there? Raise up here and let me know if you are there. He will redeem your life Amen. from all destruction. Amen. Devastation, no more. Amen. Destruction, no more. Damnation no more. Because the Lord follows you about. He says, that's the redeemed of the Lord. That's the healed of the Lord. That's the forgiven of the Lord. That's the free of the Lord. And everywhere you go, he'll protect your life from destruction in Jesus' name. And then he says, he crowns thee. With loving kindness and tender mercies. The mercies of the Lord will be a crown over your head and over your life. And then in verse 5, in verse 5, who satisfies thy mouth with good things. I didn't hear your amen. The Lord says, open your mouth and I will fill that mouth with the goodness of heaven. When you go through life and you know that God is there and whatever is happening on earth, he fills your mouth with good things. You just got a job and you enter there and you sit in the new chair at the new desk or the new table and you open the window screen you look out and everywhere and say praise the Lord this is where the Lord had given me now and then somebody comes in and he says uh, welcome we well, were expecting you be careful here because here there are people who decide the destiny 
of people. And we decide how long you are going to stay on that siege. I just came here to, that's what they say. They came here just to tell you that so and so was on that siege. And when he forgot himself and he became too happy, we'll seated him. He's not there now. Another one came. He was so happy and said, look at the place I am now. And we looked at him and we gave him three months. He didn't go beyond those three months. We'll seated him. So you have come now. But you know, the Lord is the one that has crowned you. Amen. And nobody can remove that crown. Amen. Your crown. Yes, I said your crown. Yes, Even the devil cannot remove that. Amen. When the Lord lifts you up and he puts you in the position, maybe in your class, maybe in your position, maybe in your ministry, anywhere that the Lord himself was healed you of all hearts. And it says, the next place is this place. You will enjoy that place the Lord has put you. Amen. So that thy, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Thy youth renewed like the eagles. Look at the eagles. They fly, fly. This year, and then if they see that other birds are flying at the same level, and, and those eagles have sharp eyes, eyesight, they look at that eagle, they say, uh uh, you are coming at the same level, okay, come up. And the eagles, eagles go up and up and up, and all those other birds, they try, they never match the height of that eagle. And the Lord says, he renews your youth like that of the eagle. Ah, climbing, growing, increasing. And those who do not have the grace of God, the power of God, the partnership with God, they say, what a man can do, a woman can do. And what you can do, we can do. That's what Pharaoh and the chariots of Pharaoh, that's what they thought. They saw those children of Israel and they crossed the Red Sea. Three million of them. The teenagers among them. The infants among them. The mothers among them. And uh, the spinsters among them. Bachelors among them. Married or married among them. They crossed over. And Pharaoh said, chariots and my soldiers, look at them. They were our slaves. And what an Israelite can do, a follower of Pharaoh can do. They said, yes, let's move on. And then they moved on in the middle of the Red Sea. They discovered every Israelite can get through but Those people that do not have God, grace, goodness, and the gift of God, there's a point they get to and the water closes in on them. But it will never close in on you. You'll be going up and up because he crowns you with his loving kindness. And then he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. If you're 20 and you're feeling tired, get strength like an eagle today. If you're 30, 40, and you're getting weary, and you're walking little, and you say, where can I sit down? I am tired. I am worn out. And the breath is going out of me. My heart is almost jumping out. I want to sit down somewhere. If you're like that today, and you are here, I pray the power and the grace and the goodness of God from heaven, we come into you right there. You will get up with the strength of an eagle in Jesus' name. If you're 70, you're 80, and you say, of course, look at me. I have to be tired. No, I don't have to. 
Look at me. I have to be sick. Because, you know, when you get to 80 and 90, you must be sick. Who tells you that? There are 90-year-old people, 100-year-old people, even those who are more than 100, and the Lord gives them that goodness and that healing and that power and that skill, and they're renewed like the eagles. I claim that. I said I claim that. Because he says, as you follow the Lord, and he gives his goodness into your life, his grace in your life, his healing power in your life, it will renew you, your youth, like that of the eagle. Eaglets and eagles will, will fly. Me, me, and all my children, and all the eaglets, Will go up. Will go up. You and I will have a good, there's good competition. There's bad competition. There is a healthy competition. There is unhealthy competition. But you and I will have good competition. As I go up, you say, I'm coming beyond you. And then you go up. I said, look at this little boy. Look at this little girl. It's only 30. It's only 40. And I am, don't tell it. And then I go up again. He said, I'm coming higher. I am coming higher. Healthy competition in Jesus' name. I see the achiever there. I see the builder there. I see the growing one there. And you are the one to take over. As I climb and you come up, and I climb and you come up again, and I climb and you come up again, I say, there's no point. Get the baton and go. The Lord will do it in your life. And multiply his grace in your life in Jesus' name. If you're sick, it will heal you. If you're tired, it will strengthen you. If you are impotent, it will empower you. Now we come to I. I, this is intervention for invincibility by the intercessor. Christ is our intercessor. It's right now in heaven and is interceding and praying for you. We're looking at Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Romans chapter 8 verse 34. It said, who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Intercession. That is, an intercessor is somebody praying for another. What a great intercessor we have. When you pray, there are things you forget to mention. The intercessor Christ, he has more of what you remember than you do. He will remind God, he has asked for this, but he needs this, give him that. That intercessor will make you unconquerable, invincible. That's why there's power in your life every time. Power to do, power to climb, power to achieve, and power to excel. It's interceding for you. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Look at verse 37. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. People will wonder in your life. You will be a wonder. I said you will be a wonder. 
Look at this young man with all the pressure and all the things we heap on him. It's like the thing, what should weaken him is making him stronger. And what should make him just down to us? I can't go on anymore. If that is that and this is this, all right, take the position, take the job, and take everything. I'm through. Instead of that, is living on those persecutions and on the pressure, and it's up and up and up. And that will show and that will express your victory in Jesus' name. Because in all these things that happen at school, in all the things that happen at work, in all the things that happen in the marketplace, in all these things that happen in the village, in all these things that happen in our extended family, you are more than a conqueror through him who has loved you and strengthened you. You are strengthened. You are lifted. You are blessed. You are promoted in Jesus' name. J, J now is joyfulness for the joyless by the justifier. He is the one that justifies us. He's the one, yes, I know where you've been. You shouldn't have been there. Then he brings you up and cleanses you up. Yes, I know you said that thing. Normally, you should have been condemned for that. But I bore your guilt and it brings you and it takes away all your condemnation. And it sends you going joyfully because of the grace of God that comes upon your life. In Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 26, Romans chapter 3, verse 26 is telling us, it says to declare I say, this time, the righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus, the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Our lives of the past, what we've done, what we've been, what we have thought, should have made Satan to follow us every moment of the time, accusing us, guilty man, guilty woman. The lives we have lived in the past should have made all those evil spirits accuse us to tell us in our mind unfit, unqualified, rejected in our entity. Everything we've done in the past should have made our conscience a discomforting personality within, saying, <laughs> look at him. I'm just saying, I'm the policeman inside you here. You said that, you did that, you went there, you touched that, condemned. Everything we've been doing should have made all our neighbors serving a negative master to be seen, bad man, bad woman. And the history will know, people will know, who are as bad as you, as sinful as you, they never amount to anything in life. And then we bow our heads in shame, in guilt, in condemnation, we cry with nobody to wipe away the tears. And it shows up our justifier. His name is Jesus. He's the judge of all the earth. He said, oh, you're crying. I feel guilty. I feel condemned. I feel like in an entity, nobody. I don't have any power, any strength. I don't have any good character. He says, have you ever heard of Calvary and of the cross? He said, yes. What do you know about that? You hear, I heard that Jesus Christ went there and died for me. As Paul said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. And he tells you, I am Jesus Christ, 
The one that forgives all sin. The one that sets free. And the one that justifies. And I can justify you today and blot out every sin, every iniquity, and every transgression. And heaven will look at you as if you never sin. Say, Lord, that's exactly what I want. And he says, call my name. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be set free, shall be justified. And then he justifies you. And he sends the Holy Ghost to bear witness in your heart. Your sins are forgiven. Your personality is changed. And the joy of salvation comes in your heart. Joyfulness for the joyless by the justifier. You never laughed before. Now you can laugh. You can smile. You are excited now. And somebody said, tell me your joy when this. Ah, you said, that's past history. I tell you I'm joyful because my sins are forgiven. I tell you I'm joyful because I am saved. I tell you I'm joyful because Christ, the justifier, has justified me, I'm on my way to heaven. Am I talking about somebody there? It will happen to you in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's there to forgive you and to cleanse you and to justify you and to bring you the joy of heaven in your soul. You want that joy of salvation? And you want that friend that sticks closer than a brother. And you want the goodness of the Lord that will pervade and prevail in all your life. And you want the healing of the hurt on the inside. You want that to be taken away. You want the intercessor to make you invincible, unconquerable. And you want the justifier to give you the joy of heaven. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. He can see you there. He can see you there online. He can see you there. Anywhere you are, he can see you there. And he brings that favor into your life right now. He brings the grace into your life right now. And he brings now, he brings uh, the healing into your heart, into your soul. He brings intervention into your life. And he brings the joy and the joyfulness of the justified in your life right now. Raise up that hand. Stand up where you are. If you are raising up your hand. Thank you and God bless you. You are raising your hand. You are standing up. You are saying, oh Lord, I want that now. Wherever you are, stand up and I'm praying for you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, what you'll yet do. I pray for everyone wanting your goodness and the joy and the freedom and the forgiveness and the salvation in their lives and their hearts. Lord, forgive them in Jesus' name. And the grace and the strength and the skill and the power to go and live in newness of life. Grant unto them right now in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation fill their heart. And let them now by that joy, by that justification, live a victorious life even from now on in Jesus' name. I pray none. Here will be a fool that does not prepare for the future. Prepare every one of us for that eternal future. So that when we live here, we'll be with you in heaven, in glory, forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless every one of you.